welcome to another episode of Flourish TV. You know, I was thinking about the word flourish and really what it means is winning. If you're flourishing, you're winning in life. And really you should flourish in every single part of your life. You know, I'm praying for you. I'm thinking about you as we're navigating through these really tough, intense, hard, struggling tensions times you know that there's like three things going on there's a, a global pandemic there's an economic crisis there's racism and i want you to know that i'm praying for you that man god is good god is with you and i know that he wants you to flourish in your life those planted in the house of the lord will flourish i have a friend that's going to come on in, in just a minute and and she's a great friend and we're going to talk about the issue of mental health we're going to talk about isolation anxiety depression how we navigate and and what i'm praying is that you will hear one scripture one thought maybe one aha moment one word from god can change everything in your life so i'm praying that there will be breakthrough in your life that that struggle and that oppression will be broken over your life and that we will watch you walk out the fullness that God has for your life. Okay, I'm gonna invite in my friend, Heather Palacios. Here we go, she's coming. And on, okay. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Welcome. I wish I was there. I, I wish know. I was there. I wish you were here. I wish I was there with you at the beach. <gasps> Yeah, well. Yeah, but you don't like really, the beach. I never go. I know, I, I don't understand that. Okay, so everybody, this is my friend, woohoo, Heather Palacios. And I am so excited, and she is so excited to be here with you as we discuss this issue of mental health. And we're gonna dive into to isolation depression, mental health, anxiety. Uh, but before we do, there are three things, Heather, that you and I have in common. Are you ready? Number one, we both love Florida. Yes, we do. Number two, except for I like the beach, you maybe, I don't understand how you could live in, like how, how in the world you could live that close to Miami and not be on the beach every day is just, beyond me i like the beach body but i don't like the beach <laughs> That's awesome. yes we love the beach body and and i love the beach okay number two we both love golden doodles <gasps> i got one right here you do it can he come over or no <gasps> hey buddy so cute Okay, that's the new does, one. Does, yeah. Yes, that's the 80 pound horse that I bought. That's awesome. <laughs> I love my Samson so much. I mean, just words can hardly describe my love for my dog. And that's how that's why I, I know you and me will be on the same um, block in heaven. We will be yes. on the golden doodle block. <laughs> Okay, and number three, we both love, like, love, love, the local church. Oh, yeah. I was just there. Were you? Yeah, I, and I'm here yeah. now. Like, I mean, yeah. all of your posts, all of your comments, your whole life is given and dedicated to the local church. So, man, I'm yeah. thankful for that. I'm thankful for your life. I'm thankful for all that you stand for and how you continually motivate people, you know, to, to live the life that God wants them to have, that they'll know that Jesus came to give them life and life more abundantly. So I just, right. you know, doing Flourish TV, I want to do topics and talk about, you know, this is like church girl talk. I want to talk about stuff that really matters. And I want to talk about something that can actually help people. Like we need okay. to move the marker down the field, right? If we're in, if we're in the game of life, a football game of life, we need to, we need to gain another yard in life. So I'm Go Steelers! Steelers. Yeah. And who do you guys have? Like the dolphins? I don't know. Maybe yeah. they're, 
Are they like number 48? Not even. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Okay. So, um, so I interviewed a guy with a book called The Courage to Be Healed. Okay. And it's, it's based off of the story of the, the paralytic man, right? And his four crazy friends that get on the roof and lower him down. Okay, Jesus is in a room full of people, full of healed people, wealthy people, and just the courage that it took for this lame man to let his friends lower him into the presence of Jesus. And, and, and right. all of the thoughts, like, what if I'm rejected? What if, what if he doesn't have time for me? What if he doesn't want to heal me? What if I still leave in the same condition? And Jesus said something so amazing. He said, um, son, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven. Right. So before Jesus did anything to the outward part of the body, he immediately went to the inward parts. Your sins are forgiven. Right. And so here's the thing. Believers can be saved and broken at the same time. Right. Now, so, some people, this is like, what? I thought once I received Jesus, everything's smooth. Everything is all good. And ministers, Heather, can be anointed and emotionally wounded at the same time. So after Jesus dealt with the inside, your sins are forgiven. Then he said, now take up your bed and go to your house. Look, you're right. healed. Right. So let's talk about sort of that inward attention that we need to give ourselves. Okay. We're just coming out of this global pandemic, right? Of, <sighs> of quarantine. I'm like, I mean, okay. Isolation. So I want to just, I want to read what isolation means, the definition. And then I'm going to let you talk. You're like, I need, you're like can a you horse. Me? Yeah. But can you hear me? I can. Yeah. Okay, yes. Okay. So, okay. So isolation is standing detached from others of a like kind. So isolation is being detached from your own kind, what, whatever group that is. So the Bible says this, that in Proverbs 18.1, a man who isolates himself seeks his own desires and rages against all wise judgments. I want to talk to you about how did, how, what do you think of isolation? How does that affect your mental health? And what have you done to navigate through? Great question. I saw early on with the COVID announcement to America that this was going to be a very uh, uphill climb for people like myself. Um, because conventional wisdom, biblical wisdom, and clinical knowledge all say, for someone like myself, isolation is public enemy number one. Mm -hmm. So I was in a real quandary when the government mandated that I isolate. Mm -hmm. And I was like, God, this is, is this a joke? I mean, if you're punking me from heaven, you win. Because there's, I won't, this, I can't do this. I, I can't isolate. Um, mentally, it's not an option. And it's not an option for anybody um, with addiction either. So I've, I've spent a lot of time with both those arenas lately. So Amy, at first I, it was, I didn't have an answer. Yeah. I didn't have an answer. And I felt very despaired and I felt abandoned. I felt like God sold me out. Um, at the same time, I also knew that in the Bible, it says that he will give you a way out when you are tempted. Yes. And so I said, God, you're going to have to show this verse to be real because I'm going to be tempted in this isolation mentally and you got to get me a way out. Mm -hmm. And so, so there, has. there are. There are some people who, even when the quarantine is lifted, even when we're in the green phase of life or whatever, where we can all go back to our whatever normal life that that's going to look like, they still 
have things going on in their head that keep them away from people, whether it's insecurities or unforgiveness. And, and what you're saying is isolation is not good. It is no bueno for your no mental bueno. health. Like, no. tell me, tell me why, why do we need people? Okay. Great question. Um, so I'll have to go to the Bible. When you look at, there's a few cases in the Bible that um, some great people also spoke the vernacular that we would know today as um, suicidal ideation or suicidal temptation. They're my favorite people in the Bible. Mm -hmm. But one in particular was Elijah. Yeah. You know, he has this huge victory and then <clears throat> he's running for his life and finds himself in isolation out in the desert. And that's when he says uh, that he wants he wants to die. He doesn't, he doesn't want to live anymore. And, and so, I, you know, I took from, I took from that a lot of encouragement. First of all, I took from that, that I'm not weird because my mind is a dark place sometimes so dark that it doesn't want to keep going yeah. because it's in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing I took from that is I have got to change the way I perceive isolation. Yes, mm -hmm. I am in, um, geographical isolation but spiritually i am not alone i've right. never been alone and i will never be alone because the bible says that the lord goes before me and after yes. me he will never yes. abandon me and he is the same yesterday today and tomorrow and he's with me always to the end of time mm. so it was just so, kind of reframing it right no that because isn't perspective everything? It's like how you're approaching it, how you're looking at it. Because the same thing could happen to you, me, and 10 other people. And we could all come at it from a different perspective. So the cool thing is, is that God gives us his perspective. And we change what we're thinking. Because what we're thinking is not always correct. It's not always right. So we change what we're thinking to what God is thinking, right? Right. And you're right. right. You are not alone. He said, I right. will be with you. I will be in you. He's our rear guard, our front guard. He's going ahead of us. He's all around us. So right. even in times of isolation, so what's one quick word you would say to somebody that they need to snap out of isolation. They need to be connected to people. They need to be connected in life groups, Zoom groups, something where there are uh, person to person, face-to-face uh, -face interactions. Yeah, I mean, it, you're, you are, again, you are mandated to be in a geographical isolation or quarantine, whatever, but, um, but it's your choice if you want to find ways to virtually not be in isolation. That, listen, the onus is on me, Amy. When that, was, when that quarantine was announced, I had a choice. I could go in my room, shut the door, never get up, and wish I could die. Or I could say, all right, God then help me find some people so I'm not in isolation. And I think for the local church, the, they've been out in the front of this for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we, the church has a powerful presence online. Mm -hmm. And it is what has been allowed people in hospitals, people in the military, people in prison to be able to still be a part of the community because the church got it. We got to go on the internet. Right. And, and so, yeah. you know, to somebody that's, you know, just wallowing in their loneliness, first of all, stop that. Mm -hmm. Because if you are a Christ follower, you're not alone. The yeah. Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. Number two, get online and yeah. plug into your church or find an online virtual Facebook group around mm -hmm. something you're passionate about. Do you like making quilts? <laughs> I actually, I literally know about a virtual group that makes quilts. So, <laughs> You know, fight for yourself. Right. Get on the end. Fight for yourself. Man up. I would love to see you make a quilt. All right. So funny story. I, I was invited to do to be their speaker. These these quilters. <laughs> yeah. And we did a Zoom with all the quilting ladies and me. <laughs> That's the best ever. And I was like. I was like, okay, I got to find an icebreaker. I'm like, I don't even know where to begin. I don't know the first thing about sewing or quilting. <laughs> I, I love that. Okay, so as we're moving into anxiety, um, this phrase kind of came up in my heart. You can't fix it 
if you don't face it. That's good, Amy. And you have to do the root work. Okay, if you're seeing fruit of something in your life, right? The fruit of anxiety, we dig down, what's the root of that? Right. And here's the thing, like you can't come Heather and make things happen for me. I right. can't force things to happen for you. Like we have to, we have to like get our boots in the dirt. We have to get in the Bible. We have to do the hard work. We have to, we have to face things that we're thinking. We have to um, listen to the, you know, what our thoughts are telling us and we have to deal with it. Um, anxiety and, and it says this concern or solitude respecting some event future or uncertain. So we're, yeah. we're like, we're concerned about something that's uncertain, right. which is anxiety, right. which disturbs the mind and keeps it in a state of painful uneasiness. Mm -hmm. Now, listen, I, I have experienced anxiety. I have experienced painful uneasiness about a future event that hasn't even happened. I mean, it's, right. it's weird how you can go down that track of anxiety. Anxiety right. is an unceasing restlessness. Mm -hmm. So when anxiety comes to you, Heather, how do you respond? A great question. Um, I, I'll give you, I, I'm just gonna give you my, my recipe, but yeah. I'm, not, I'm not an expert. And so uh, if anybody's listening, please don't email me with a lawsuit because <laughs> I'm, I'm not the professional. I'm just a satisfied customer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So here, here's just a couple of things that I do, practically speaking, with anxiety. Yeah. Uh, first of all is I, I cut the caffeine either a lot or in its entirety, because caffeine is a stimulator. It revs you up, which is great when you want to go do a spin class. But if your brain right. is already revved, revved up. why would you add a, another thing wow. that will rev it up more? You're hurting yourself. You're hurt. That's a good so point. You've got to cut back on the caffeine. Just cut back yeah. on it, all right? Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is, the body and the mind are, can get very agitated and, and angst and anxious, mm -hmm. all those A words um, yeah. with that whole idea of, of anxiety and fear. And so what do you do with all that? You've got to release it physically, walk yeah. or yes. run, because yes. it's, it's almost nature's way of through your pores, mm -hmm. letting some of that fear just be, um, be released out into, out into the nature, out into the yeah. world. And right. the great thing about going for a walk, and listen, if you're in a wheelchair, you can do this. If you're mm -hmm. on crutches, you, anybody can get outside and stroll, crawl, walk, or run. But mm -hmm. then the other th the thing I like to think about it tangibly is I left all that anxiety out there. Now I'm back yeah. at home, and it didn't yeah. follow me back in the house. Right. And then the third thing I is this. That. The third thing is this. Um, you know, you do need to talk to your doctor. Sometimes people mm -hmm. have to go on professional, clinical, medicinal treatment for a short yeah. while mm -hmm. because you're, you're, you've done all of these things and you're mm -hmm. still highly anxious. Don't, don't accept that. Don't accept right. that. That's not what yeah. God wants for our bodies. So I would say call a doctor. And all of that to say my favorite verse as it pertains to anxiety is when David said four words in Psalm 62, one, he mm -hmm. said, I must calm down. Wow. <laughs> I love that. Yep. No, I, I actually walk almost every day. Uh, it, it's rare when I miss it, you know, like two to three miles, sometimes four, depending on how much time I have. And I listen to historical fiction audiobooks, which mm. I'm I'm slightly addicted to. It, it like it gets my mind a break, and it helps me to, like you said, release that anxiety, release that pressure. But a, a couple of uh, one scripture that I love, Heather, too, is Philippians four six: "Be anxious for nothing." Right. Like, like this is this is the scripture: "Be anxious for nothing." In everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Okay, so right. in the Passion Translation, 
it says, don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. You know how like you, you're, you like feel this pull in all these different directions. And you're like, wait, I'm ridiculously in charge. I don't have to be pulled in that direction. Uh, right, be right. Sa be saturated in prayer throughout each day, offering your faith-filled request before God. And, and listen to this, tell him every detail of your life which right. I think is huge when you're dealing with anxiety because there is nothing too hard, too tough, too difficult that he cannot handle. And right. nothing is new under the sun. And right. God's not surprised. And God loves you. And you're the apple of his eye. And he's got your back. And somehow he's going to work out all things for your good. Sure. So like, Tell him everything. Okay, and then in another translation, do you like all the translations? I do. I love them all. Yes. I do too. Okay. So the message, which you know is like, blah, paraphrase. It's, yeah. it's like, yeah. Okay. It says, don't fret or worry. And then it says, before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good will come and settle you down. It's mm -hmm. wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. Oh, I, wow. now, it, now think about it. Isn't anxiety to, down to the root of it is, is worry dig down a little bit deeper is fear. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like if you're anxious about this, well, then you're fearing about something and perfect love cast out all fear. So when right, you're right. walking in God's love and you know how much God loves you, there's really no reason to fear. There's right. really no reason to be anxious. I do believe that there is a way that you can walk worry-free and anxiety-free. I'm not there yet, <laughs> but, but I believe that it wouldn't be in here if it wasn't sort of possible in some way to be anxious for nothing. Right. What are you, right, what are your right. thoughts? Yeah. You've got to keep that goal out in front of you. Um, be doing things daily to work towards it. Yeah. That, that verse, that verse is not going to be an extreme makeover um, overnight. No. You just, you just have to keep it out in front of you. You know, it's like those, those um those dog races the great you know where they they put yeah. they stick they stick the plastic rabbit out and the dog's like <laughs> <laughs> you know you got you you got to keep that plastic rabbit of I don't have to worry about anything out in front of you and just yeah. keep going towards it keep going towards it yeah right so it's like a goal hashtag yeah. goals to live worry free and anxiety free but, but if you think about all of the things that people are anxious over right now jobs. a lot economic money. Um, no, we're wearing masks in every store. We're afraid to touch surfaces. I mean, like the anxiety level right now is through the, no, no, there's riots going on now. There's, yeah. there's so much racial tension. And I mean, in the natural, if you just, if you just, um, let it, let it all go, let it all hang out. Your anxiety is going to go. Oh yeah. Well, and, and, you know, and, and it's, it's a proven fact that once it's out of control in your, in your mind, then it, then it affects, it has to go somewhere. So it goes to your body and it starts off mild with ulcers and heartburn. And then it yeah. leads sometimes to heart attacks yes. and, and, and strokes. So you got it. You got to keep that rabbit out in front of you and keep working toward it. Yeah. Amen. And pray, like just pray, walk, pray, talk to God, release it, to, cast all of your cares on him for he careth for you. Um, one thing, okay. one, and then, and then one, let me just say one thing really quick, because I think yeah. this is, this has been, um, essential for me and I, and I, it, it's kind of like elementary and simple, but I want to share it really quick is, you know, if you start to, there's fear, there's anxiety. If you start to like panic, you start mm -hmm. to feel like angst in your chest. Um, mm -hmm. first of all, make sure you find a, you know, consult a professional about that. But in that moment, wherever you are, mm -hmm. um, I do an inhale, exhale, okay, repeat repeatedly, and I will, I yeah. will inhale, I will inhale saying J E, I exhale S U S. Okay. But in my mind, in my mind, I inhale on the G. And I, I'm a Chinese dog. And I exhale. Yeah. Look, at, I'm having panic right now with my dog. <laughs> 
Okay, breathe in and out. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like, but, Love but it. you know, because I, Amy, I have found, I'm like, I'm like, you know, so you start panicking or you start freaking out and mm -hmm. you're in the front row at church, Amy. I mean, what, yeah. are, you, what are you gonna do? I, so right. I'm like, God, I need an instant, I need an instant relief for, for any onset of panic. Right. And so on an airplane, I've done this. Before I mm -hmm. speak, I've done this. I inhale on the G and I exhale mm -hmm. on the thus. Oh, I love that. Okay, as we head into talking about depression, um, a scripture that I found in Proverbs 12, 25 says, anxiety in the heart of man causes depression. So talk about the two connecting, anxiety and depression. Yeah. Anxiety in the heart yeah. of man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. So let's talk about depression for just a minute. Um, the act yeah. of pressing down or the state of being pressed down like to a low state so imagine yeah. living your life with that feeling of just depressed it mm -hmm. is not what god wants for our lives and it's and it's it's my it's my biggest my biggest battle and temptation it's it can be so debilitating yeah it's, it's very hard depression is really hard mm -hmm. it's hard Tell me about it. Like when some when something is triggered, what what's your process? What do you do? Uh, well, I mean that's that's been um, that's been this whole this whole ice this whole COVID thing has been has really affected me in, in with depression and mm -hmm. you know I I'm, I'm I'm keeping my eyes above the waves you know yeah. but I'm I'm learning along the way what I'm doing because. Um, on the other side of this, you know, maybe God will have me use it to encourage somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, number one, without exception, and the number two is a long way down, but number one, you've got to have a Christian counselor. Yeah. Um, yes. I've, that's been um, the number one for me this whole time. And, mm -hmm. and, and what's cool is, is I've created, you know, an awesome list of resources for people to get yes. that. Yeah. even in quarantine. So mm -hmm. anybody that wants to can reach out to me and I will give you some options. But for me, that is not an option to not have a Christian counselor. Right. Um, so, you know, I get to interview uh, people, you know, all the time and um, in different books, but this one, uh, Struggling Well, um, mm. was a Christian psychologist. And he wrote in this chapter, and, and this, is, this is what Rick Warren said, uh, it's not just the, the case that faith or religious belief will inoculate or immunize, immun, immunize, it, it, immunize? Im, immunize, yes, immunize a person against mental illness. Like just because you have faith, it's not like, like it's not going to, come at you or right. something that you're going to deal with. Okay. The World Health Organization, which we've heard a lot from lately. Oh, hi, buddy. Oh. I can see your dog. The World <laughs> Health Organization. Okay. Reports that depression alone is one of the leading global causes of disabilities mm. affecting around 121 million people worldwide. Depression. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's also important to note that a cousin to depression, anxiety, uh, most common um, health issue in the United States affecting 40 million adults in the United States age 18 and older, which mm. is 18% of the population. Anxiety disorders are highly treatable, yet only about one third of those suffering receive treatment, which is like- right. And I'm right. Like, and then he goes on to say, which I didn't know this, that there are two kinds of depression and anxiety, mm -hmm. situational and right. genetic. So here we have situations, right? That come right every day, like every, yeah. every single day, there's a situation that we can choose to um, let, I mean, you kind of let it depress you or you stand up you're an overcomer, you speak God's word, you do the hard work, you renew your, your mind with the word of God, 
you put on worship music, you let worship music come and you just, you just say, you know what? I'm not giving in to depression and anxiety. What are your thoughts? Yeah. It's, it's the, I hate it. I I, I gotta, I mean, I gotta be, I gotta be real. I cannot sit here. (laughs) Yeah. I, I really hate it. I hate Mm -hmm. it. I hate, you know, Amy, I mean, I, you know, I've gotten to know you and your church and your people and I love them so much. I feel like, um, you know, it, I would be remiss if I wasn't honest. Yeah. Um, the problem with depression is, is it can left unrendered lead to death. Right. And that's very scary Mm. because, you know, you know, when you start when you're living in a chronic state of depression and and you Mm -hmm. can't get out of it, then Mm -hmm. you start thinking of, well, I've got to get out of it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's where the enemy really tantalizes you with an Mm -hmm. option of suicide. Wow. Because he comes to, to kill, steal and destroy. Yeah. And, and the operative word there for me Mm -hmm. is he comes to, is he comes to kill, kill. And if I would commit suicide, I would kill mm. myself. Mm. Yeah. But God says, I have come that you might have life and have it abundant. Mm. And God says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And yes. God says that, you know, um, because I live, you also must we'll live. live. Yes. Or will live. Mm-hmm. And so um, I've got to always just be telling myself that if I am entertaining the thought to escape depression by death, that does not come from God. Mm-mm. That has never come from God, and that will mm-hmm. never come from God. Amen. Because God only would speak life to me. Life. So if I am hearing whispers of death, that is the mm-hmm. enemy. And I've got yes. two choices. Mm-hmm. I can either de- dethrone Jesus Christ off the throne in my heart and put the devil there, mm-hmm. or I can rise up within myself and I can believe that greater is he who is in me than he coming at me. And I can speak yeah. to that. And I can say, enemy, you have no right to my life. And I reject mm. your temptation in the name of Jesus to kill myself. Yeah. Well, I think some people forget that we're in a spiritual battle. Like mm-hmm. that there is an enemy out to steal, kill, and destroy. And he will do anything to take one's life, to take one's health, one's money, one's kids. And I know it's something that you have really dedicated your life to is, is suicide prevention and, yeah. and helping people and just being out there and being present and being a voice for awareness. And I just, I thank you for your heart and your passion um, for, for the deeply hurting. And the thought that somebody would want to take their life. Mm. Yeah. Like if, if they knew how loved they were by God, right. if, if right. they could, if we could just reach through the screen and go, wake up. He yeah. loves you so much. He sent his only son. He's got a huge plan for your life. Right. When I go to the, um, when I, when I go to the hospitals, sometimes I go t- because I get asked to visit because of a suicide attempt. Mm-hmm. You know, Amy, sometimes, sometimes they're on life support. So they don't, they don't know I'm there and they can't talk to me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so I, that doesn't stop me. <laughs> mm-hmm. I still will lay my hands on their feet or their head. Yes. And I will pray for them because the enemy can hear me. Yeah. Right. And, and I know that as, you know, just as, as an advocate for somebody that tried to commit suicide and an, mm-hmm. and an outspoken ambassador for Jesus Christ mm-hmm. in those moments, uh, I have the opportunity to speak life over that person. Mm-hmm. And so yes. I do. Yeah. So I do. Yeah. And uh, sometimes it's been cool to see sometimes them be able to come out of that life support situation. And Amy, sometimes mm-hmm. they don't, sometimes mm-hmm. they don't, but, um, I've, I feel like I've done my part. Right. You know, I can't save life, a life, mm-hmm. but, but I can go out trying with, mm-hmm. with, with, with praying God's words of life over, over somebody and myself right. too. Right. 
one scripture that I kind of had on my heart as we're just kind of finishing up here is, is in Nehemiah 8.10. It's the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Now, yeah. w- like when do you need joy? When do you need that fruit of the spirit? When do you need that fruit of joy? Well, it's easy to have deep joy when everything's great. And it's life is like a Hallmark movie, which I love Hallmark movies. I mean, things are working out. The kids are all good. The money's good. The health is good. You're mentally, you're, you're on point. And it's easy to have joy right. when we really need to tap into that fruit of joy is when we are depressed, when we are pressed down and right. joy rises up and works like as a buoyancy in our life. And it just brings us right back up to, to yeah. a place and a seat of victory. So right. I just encourage anybody that's struggling and feeling depressed and oppressed and pressed down that you let the joy of the Lord come in and be your strength. You can't do this in your own ability. You need his help and you need something like that river of living water on the inside to come and rise up and flow out of your life. Um, right. Just Amen. as we're, as we're closing here, you know, Um, Heather, I look at you with your cute top knot bun on your head. I mean, I would look redonkulous if I did that on my head. But you look so cute and you look so vibrant and yet you're real about your struggles and you're genuine and you're authentic and you love God and you love people and you tell people, you know, what's happened in your life and then you give them ways out and you pray for people. And man, I'm grateful for you and all that you are in the body of Christ. Thanks for being a part of our Flourish TV today too. My pleasure. Love you, buddy. Appreciate you. (laughs) And just, you know, finishing up on a scripture in third John two, beloved, first of all, that's huge. Like beloved, like you're loved of God. You're Mm -hmm. you're like, you're his prized possession. Just be loved when you Mm. feel hated, when you feel put down, when you feel like nobody's there for you, just know that you're his beloved. And it doesn't matter what anybody else says or what they think about you. It only matters that you're his beloved. I pray that you may prosper in every way and that your body may be kept well, even as your soul keeps well and prospers. What is your soul? That mind, that will, and that emotions, that mental state, that mental well-being of mind. I pray that you flourish in your mind, in your will, Mm. in your emotions, in your soulish realm, and that you will live your life to the fullness of all that Mm. God has for you. Okay! Amy, I'm fired with those verses today. (laughs) All right, guys, we're finishing up here the episode on mental health. And we just pray God's best for you, that God keep you and bless you and make his face to shine upon you and that you flourish in life. Thank you, Heather. Thank you, I love you. You're amazing. Bye.